Hi everybody, Chris Pies here with another uh, episode on PCA Sim Racing Classroom. This week we are tackling uh, the Daytona Road Course uh, here in wonderful Daytona, Florida. It's a course that is the, it, well it's just famous in American sports car racing um, as the holder of, of course, the, the Daytona 24 Hour, which is one of the most prestigious races in all of endurance racing globally next to arguably the, uh, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, the track is a roval in the sense that it is part of it is on the uh, oval for that they use for NASCAR racing, but it also uses the infield, hence roval. Uh, it's not a complicated track, so to speak. Uh, there's not that many corners, and a lot of the track is completely flat out. But what it lacks in variety, it makes up for in the quality of racing that tends to happen around here. Uh, big emphasis on drag um, in terms of slipstreams and getting a good run on your opponents down the straights and good run, good runs out of really important corners. Um, and also car control. Uh, most of the setups, including the setup that we'll be running for f the fixed setup classes, uh, which are challenge and sport, uh, don't use any downforce or very little downforce, uh, which can mean that it is much more difficult to keep your car kind of underneath you uh you don't have the the aid that is aerodynamics on the rear of the car to keep it planted so it tends to move around a bit so car control uh getting good runs out of important corners uh and 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 finally fuel strategy uh as i said before this track uses a lot of fuel uh, a lot of this track you are at 100 percent throttle um much more than almost any other track that we will race at with the exclusion of Le Mans. Um, therefore, there is an opportunity to be able to save fuel, lift and coast into some corners, and with that savings, potentially have a shorter pit stop than maybe your opponent who wasn't saving, enabling you to make up some places during the pit stop. That being said, we'll get this thing started uh, and we will go through a track walk session here for Daytona. Um, I did a couple of laps here. Uh, one is kind of an alternative line, which I will show after the main um, demonstration. Uh, the neat thing about Daytona is almost every corner here has more than one way you can take the corner and, and every variation between. Um, specifically turn one, there's so many different uh, lines through here. You can take a nice wide line on entry. You can take a tight, narrow line to minimize the distance traveled. Both result in a pretty similar uh, time through the corner if you do them properly, uh, which can lead to really good side-by-side -side racing. Um, going side-by-side -side through some corners will not harm your lap time as much as other tracks because there are multiple legitimate lines you can take. So let's get this party started. Uh, let's uh, go through the uh, the track walk of Daytona. So very first off, coming down the back straight, um, the the we'll talk about the back straight and coming up to start finish towards the end of the lap. Um, but coming on to start at start finish for the purposes of our lap, the thing I will mention is you have to get a good run coming out of the final corner, which is the bus stop. It is the longest straightaway uh, that is on this track and arguably one of the longer straightaways in North America. Getting a poor run coming out of the bus stop will really hurt your lap time. So the most important corner on the track is the last corner leading onto this long straightaway into this very fast turn one. The thing we want to do about turn one and what we want, how do we want to try to set up is because we're coming off the oval and down into the infield section, we are coming off a of banking, transitioning down to a flat piece of tarmac and then making a very fast decreasing radius turn. Um, the tendency here is to go in too deep for this corner. Um, it's very imperative that you pick a really good consistent place to break um, so you're not going to end up running wide through the corner. It's also a place where you tend to have cars try to make moves on you or you make moves on someone else. It's very easy to get a run um, as the following car on the car in front due to the long straightaway in the um, the slipstream effect all the way down that straightaway, which will put you side by side with another car going into the, this turn one. So being able to both manage um, your brake zone and also manage a car potentially being on your outside or inside, depending on the line you take, is very important to being successful at Daytona. 
But if we assume we don't have a car on our inside or outside, my ideal line and what I like to take is kind of a middle of the road approach. Um, meaning that on my entry into this corner, I tend to move maybe to the middle of the oval uh, to kind of open up the beginning of turn one and give me as straight a line as possible. I tend not to go all the way to the wall on the right because I'm trying to minimize the, the, the road traveled. Um, so I'm trying to shorten the distance as much as possible. Um, I will show in the alternative line uh, that you can go all the way to that wall and still be very successful. Um, but for me personally, I tend to be more consistent with a little bit of a shadow line. It also has the added benefit of protecting the inside uh, on turn one from any attackers. If I'm down on the, le on the left hand side of the corner, it's less likely that somebody's going to try to send it down the inside and take away the short line from me. They'll have to go the long way around the outside, which is very difficult to do on any corner, especially in turn one. The goal for turn one is to try to draw as straight a line as possible for your braking zone. My braking zone is going to be in this void between the cones and the grass. Uh, where that is, is kind of subjective in the sense that it depends on your braking ability and the angle you're taking in. Um, I use this yellow signpost here on the right out of the corner of my eye as a guidepost on when I need to break. And then I'm also using just in general the way these cones look and the distance after the grass as my break point. It ends up being somewhere getting kind of close to the cones. It's pretty some it's pretty close to where when the um the yellow sign on the right exits my vision is a good indication of breaking, but my eyes are always down track. I'm always looking over here where the cursor is. I'm never looking out the right side of the car directly at the post. It's just in my peripheral vision. Um, get used to the sight picture coming into turn one because again, there's not a specific line that you can pick. Um, there's not a really good brake marker here. Uh, so you have to be comfortable with what it looks like coming in. Again, hit the brakes. It's a very hard brake. You are transitioning from an oval, from a, a, a banked surface down to a flat surface. Thankfully, the transition is pretty minor. There's not a big bump or a jolt like most rovals. Um, so we don't have to worry about that but we stu still need to take into account that we are going into a very level surface, meaning we don't have any camber assisting us. We're not going uphill. Um, it's very easy, like I said earlier, to run through this corner and go too, too deep. So pick a good marker that you wanna break. It's going to be pretty much threshold breaking, straight a line as possible. And then as after we've done our initial really heavy brake pedal, we're gonna start bleeding off the brake because this corner, as I said before, is a increasing or a decreasing radius corner. So that means that the radius is getting tighter and tighter the further we go around it. And it ultimately culminates in its tightest point where we're apexing. So all this point at the beginning is just to get the car slowed down and get the car turned to set up for the latter half of the corner. I kind of think of it as a two phase corner. So your first phase is this braking zone that is a bit of a turn on the way in. And then the second phase is after you've done the majority of your braking, you rotate the car finally and accelerate out. We're bleeding off the brake because we still need to turn the car. If we're under 100% threshold ABS braking and we try to turn the steering wheel, the car will not turn because we're asking the tires to give us all their grip and braking. Um, so bleeding off the brakes allows the, the tires to have a little bit of ability to actually turn the car still. And we need that for the first part of the corner, obviously. As you can see at this point, I'm about halfway on the brake pedal and I'm just consistently bleeding off, kind of managing that brake pedal as much as I can, feeling where the grip of the car is, what the front end of the car is trying to do, but still understanding I still need to slow the car down. My goal on the first part of the, the track is to try to end up, as, or first part of the corner is to end up here, about mid track um, relative between the white lines. Once I get to this point, my eyes are over here at the tires and around the corner which is going to be my ultimate apex point, which is way past these tires around the corner. I can't actually see it yet, but I'm anticipating it. As I turn in, I'm gonna use a little bit of brake to get the final rotation of this car. If you look at the, the, the nature of the track and it's consistent all the way around Daytona is there is a crown in this track. Anything to the right of the crown, anything right of mid track is off camber slightly. Everything to the inside of mid track is on camber slightly um, we're not talking extremes here but it is enough to kind of unsettle the car if you're not expecting it so you can see right here if i move the camera just a touch 
you can see what I mean about the crown and the, and the road. Um, we tend to have a little bit of a, the, the, the track on the left side. You can still see a little bit of track over here on the left, which means we've got a little bit of camber on the inside of this corner. You look at the way the car is situated and on the way in, you can see how the road is kind of falling off to the right, which means the further right we go, the less camber we have. In fact, it's off camber, which is going to make it more difficult to turn. That's why so many lines work well through here is that if you you think about it, the wider the line, the the the, the bigger the radius of the corner, the more speed you can carry through it. Well, the caveat at Daytona is the wider the line, the less camber you have to assist you to turn. So it's kind of a, you got to figure out where the threshold and, and where you want to be in terms of lap times and how you want to make your speed. So I like it being in the middle. At this point, I've pretty much started my final turn in for this corner. I've got a little bit of brake pedal just to try to set that nose just enough. Just keep a little bit of weight on the nose so it bites for the final part of the corner. And as I turn in and as I cross over that crown in the uh, in the road and actually go on camber, I try to get off the brake pedal as much as I can and roll the speed through. So I'm pretty much off the brakes. And then as soon as I'm off the brakes and I've got that rotation of the car, I start feeding the throttle. I only start adding throttle when I know I'm going to hit my apex point based on the trajectory of the car. And my apex point is right around a little bit before that right around here as close to the grass as I can be careful not to get on the grass you can do that with the left side tires and it can upset the balance of the car but you want to try to get your tires down to the grass as close as possible notice it's after the tire wall um, we don't really flirt with the tires too terribly much if we do it properly um, if you find yourself getting really close to these tires consistently you're turning in too early frankly um, and you're, you're apexing the corner too early and you're going to run out of room on the exit if you do it right, when you go back to throttle, you will only be adding throttle as you're going through the corner. You will never add, come out, and then add again, um, only increasing throttle. And you will be opening your hands with full throttle on the exit and using all the track for a nice, smooth track out. So let me back it up, show what it looks like again from the, from the oval. Coming down, as I said, using that little uh, post on the right, brake, straight line, maximum brake, off the brake a little bit to get it to turn finding that grip off the brake after final turn in start feeding on the throttle apex it super late and open our hands as we apex it one thing you'll notice about turn one is because of the low downforce and you're not going too fast ter too terribly fast but the low downforce as well as the camber situation with the crown of the road you'll find that as you turn in right for the end the rear of the car really wants to wiggle around um, you have to be very disciplined with your throttle pedal uh, to add throttle slowly and smoothly as opposed to just jumping on it and, and treating it like an on-off switch. If you jump on it too hard, the rear end is going to get squirrely and it's going to start to move on you. You risk entering trash control, which is going to cut throttle, which is going to make your exit uh, much slower than it should be. Um, or worst case scenario, potentially spinning the car because you're out of control. This little right left um, really isn't much of a consideration. It's fully flat. The only time that this becomes something to really think about is if you're going too wide through here. You can do it, but the thing to be careful with is understand that depending on if you're the outside car or the inside car, you need to give the other person room. You can take this too wide. Both cars can be 100% flat through here too wide, but you need to leave room for the other competitor. If you're the car on the right coming through this final right hand or left hander, you need to basically have it in your mind that when you track out, you're going to track out all the way to the basically right side tires close to the grass. If you're the inside car going through this left hander, you need to understand that as soon as you go through the corner, you can't just track out like you normally would. You need to keep that steering angle to bring the car over to make sure that you're allowing the car on the outside room. And then finally, at the apex itself, if you're the inside car, you need to be all up on that curb to grant your opponent uh, adequate room for them to do the same. Because they, they, if they're going to take it flat out, they need to apex it as well, just displaced by a car width. So if you're the outside car, you also need to take an account. There's a car there. Take it uh, a little bit wide and displaced to allow them to do it. But as I said, if two cars are working together, you can take this flat out. Um, side by side, no problem. Now we're coming into the horseshoe. We've come through the little chicane there. Um, the things to be aware of is one, you've got pit lane uh, over here on the left. Um, 
understand that the blend line ends uh, down here uh, where the, the uh, dotted line starts to begin. If a car is coming out of pit lane and it's over here on the left and you want to move over there, you can't just drive into them. They have the right of way in left of the blend line. Um, so you're going to have to merge at some point. This is the typical line is over here on track left, meaning that the cars on track will have to cross or tend to cross over into the pit out lane. Um, it's not a problem unless there's a car there. So just be prepared. The, the car pitting out does not yield to the cars that are on track. If they're already out there, you can't just drive into them and just understand they may be going a little bit slower than you expect. If there is a car out there and you're on track and you're up alongside them, you're just going to have to take the horseshoe from uh, mid-track as opposed to all the way track left. Setting up for the horseshoe, what we're going to do is we're going to look for our brake marker. My brake marker tends to be the end of the dotted line here. So that's where I will hit the brakes and it's going to be a fairly heavy brake. I'd say about an A pedal immediately transitioning and starting to come off and trail braking into the corner. I like to treat this corner kind of as a carousel. So I try to get down to the apex as soon as possible and ride that inside curving. If you look at uh, the track and also remember what I said in turn one, there's a crown in the road. Anything left of the, the mid stripe of the road is going to be off camber. Anything to the right or the corner side is going to be on camber. Um, so what we want to do is we want to take it in my mind, we want to take advantage of the camber as much as we can. So we need to try to turn in early. It's a little counterintuitive, but turn in early for this corner so we can take advantage of that camber. If we delay the turn in and we turn in late, that means we're going to enter the corner off camber and we're not gonna have the same amount of grip. So my line through here tends to be an early turn in because this is, this is a horseshoe. This is, this is basically almost 180 degrees going the other way, but you notice I've already started to turn in. And my goal is to try to get my right side tires down to where this curbing starts and ride the curbing around. So I start to really bring it in nice and tight, get up on that curbing and then get a run coming out. It looks like a carousel, but I am doing a single apex point, which is very late in the corner, which is right about here. It's about two thirds around the corner is where I'm actually apexing and accelerating out of the corner. I like this in second gear. And the reason I like it in second gear is first gear tends to put too much torque in the rear tires and can really get the rear end to get squarely under power. Second gear allows me a little bit more lead way with torque. I'm lower in the rev range, which means I can use more of the throttle pedal as an accelerator, as opposed to having to be super fine and precise with my movements. I can get to full throttle sooner in second gear and accelerate out of the corner. On the way out, I'm going to be opening my hands the whole way using all of this access road on the left as additional runoff. So I can, ex I can get to full throttle and the car can handle it and not worry about entering traction control. I typically end up putting two left tires on this curbing. If I'm doing that, that means I, got, I know I got a pretty good run out. If you're constantly over here and you're not using this run out, that means you could have gone faster. Um, so add a little more speed and do it to where you organically end up over here on this service road. So if I show this without stopping and stopping it, we're going to break at the marker here, downshift all the way to second, turn in early, try to get down to that curbing that we can see. Final apex is about two thirds of round. And as we come through that final apex, we're accelerating out in second gear to get a good run. The next little bit of this course is the little kink up here on the left. Um, I was able to take this flat, no problem, even on my outlap. Uh, tires didn't seem to be an issue, um, but just do be careful on that first lap when the tires are still cold. It can get a little squirrely. Um, if you're having problems maintaining control of the car on the way in, the thing to remember is very slow, deliberate hands. When you turn in, don't jerk the wheel. Do it as a nice, deliberate move, but confident move keep the corner as wide as possible. And then when you're opening your hands, open them consistently and nice and smooth, just as smooth as you entered uh, to keep the balance of the car. What you don't want to do is you don't want to turn in and realize, oh no, I'm not going to make it. I turned in too late and then lift off the throttle. That's going to make the rear end of the car light and it's going to entice a spin at very high speed and send you off into the abyss. So full throttle, if you do have to make an adjustment, you want to make it before you enter the corner and before you make your commitment to, to turn in. If you're going too fast at turn in, 
um, the only way to really fix it is to very, very lightly lift off the throttle and try to straighten your hands as you're doing it um, to try to keep the upsetness or the, the balance to as, as much of a neutral state as possible. But as I said, as you pick up speed and as the cars get nice and sticky, use this curb all the way on the left. The turn in point is, let's see here, after the 100 board, I don't frankly use a turn in point. I'm looking up here, so I'm just looking at the curb to see when I need to turn and where I need to drive it. And then left side tires over the curbing. You have plenty of room. I mean, like, I don't even use all the track out here. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of room that even if you miss the apex or miss the curbing, you still have another three or two car widths of room to open your hands and, and make the corner just fine. Coming into the second horseshoe, um, the Western horseshoe, I think is what it's called. Uh, very similar to the first, except this one seems to never end. <laughs> um, there's a couple of different ways to handle this corner. Um, the first way is the way I like, which is kind of a double apex. Um, so we'll hit the first apex early and then we'll hit the second apex very late. Um, the second way is to take a really wide arc and only treat it as a one apex corner and that apex is super late. Um, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, the way I like it at the double apex, the disadvantage of that is that you're going to be slower. Um, you're, you're going to be slower mid corner than otherwise, and maybe potentially a little bit slower coming out. However, you don't travel as far a distance. Um, you protect the inside from attack. Uh, and it seems to be for me, at least the more consistent, um, on the way in. um, the wide line tends to be slower on. Uh, ultimate entry so you're, you're kind of diamonding the corner off in the first part of the corner um, which tends to be slower which leads you susceptible to attack on entry but like I said it tends to give you a good run coming out of the corner uh, with good or better mid quarter speed and also better exit speed I'll show you the uh, the way I tend to do it both of them start kind of over here on the left side of the of the track um, to try to open the corner a little bit but we don't want to be too far left because of the issues with the crown um, on the road that we've talked about in the camber. I will break in a straight line basically when these uh, access road or the left access road comes in, I'll break about halfway down the road, so right there. It is a pretty firm brake pedal, probably eight or a nine pe brake pedal. But as soon as I start braking, I start bleeding off the brake and start turning the car in and trail braking it in. I'm looking, my eyes are looking for the yellow curbing and I'm trying to get down to this first yellow curbing as soon as I can while all while under brakes. And this is the first apex point. I'll cross through there. The car will kind of move out a little bit, not a lot. And then I will apex again down here close to where the curbing and the grass meet is my second apex point. So there's my second apex point right there. Once I'm midway through the corner between the two apexes and the car is kind of fully rotated, I know I can get on full throttle in second gear and get a good run coming out of the corner. On cold tires, this, this corner can be a bit of a pain. It's difficult to get the power down and the, the rear can get a little squirrely. Just be very smooth and consistent with your throttle application to make sure you keep those big fat rear tires underneath the car. So without stopping it, coming in, Brake about right at the beginning of the service road. Start trailing off the brake. Get down to the first apex point, which is just what we can see. Let the car drift around, roll the speed through, start picking up throttle, picking up throttle, and full throttle and accelerate coming out. The next left-hander that's leading on to back onto the oval uh, is uh, a unique corner to say the least. Again, multiple... Um, potential paths through here. I find the shortest path to be the most consistent for me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to break at, at the beginning of the service road here on the right, take a really tight entry um, and use the curbing on the left and put my left side tires as close to the grass as I can and keep a consistent steering angle all the way through this kind of double apex corner that leads on to NASCAR. Um, the thing to remember is, is this is an increasing radius corner, so you will be accelerating after this first apex pretty much the whole way. 
What makes this corner difficult is it's very slippy. Um, it's rough in the sense that we're transitioning onto the oval. So the track is not smooth whatsoever. So the car tends to bounce around. You're adding a lot of throttle on a relatively low gear. I like second gear here. Um, you're adding a lot of throttle there. So the, the bounces in the road tend to upset the car. And when that happens, the rear of the car can jump around because you're putting a lot of, um, you're asking a lot of the rear tires from accelerating and then also from lateral grip as well. So the key is to basically keep that balance of I still need to turn the car, but I also need to accelerate. So you're opening your hands while I'm trying to maintain a relatively tight line. So let's see what it looks like coming in. Brake at this access road, this main access road, not the, the one previous. Brake at this access road in a straight line. We're going to put our right side tires over this curbing, this yellow curbing on the right. And then as we cross over the yellow curbing, we're going to start turning in. Our eyes are over here. We're looking for our apex curbing, and we're going to put our left side tires on that curbing. Again, basically on the grass there as much as we can. Um, this is not a 1X right here. Uh, as long as you keep your right side tires right of the curb. You also see where all the black marks are on the road. That's because that's where the pros drive over this curbing. So you got to get up on that curbing. You'll notice I've started to pick up throttle already. The camber on the track, it falls away from you. So that's why I like to try to keep it as tight as possible. But I've already started picking up throttle. And at this point, I'm controlling the car with the throttle. Um, I'm keeping the same steering angle the whole way through. But as I add throttle, the car is just going to understeer and the radius is going to increase. So I'm adding throttle, adding throttle, adding throttle. When I know that I can get to full throttle and my steering is starting to unwind, I'll be on full throttle in second gear. And then my second apex is right there right there where the turn is with the white line. As long as you stay right of this white line, the track is smooth. If you put your left side tires over this white line, there's a big bump here that unsettles the car. So keep it to the right of the white line. So let's back it up. Coming in, brake at the road, right side tires over the curb, turn in, left side tires touching the grass. Keep that steering angle, start feeding on throttle, start unwinding as we add more and more throttle, and then second apex is over here. Very important corner to get right because that leads on to the second longest straightaway on the track, which is this oval bit leading into the bus stop. Good opportunity to kind of take a deep breath. Uh, if it was real life, you'd be checking your belts and gauges but a really good time to kind of just psych yourself up coming up to the most difficult corner on the track to get consistent which is the bus stop so not only is it the most important corner but it's also the most difficult corner and the corner where a lot of problems tend to happen it's fast you're going left right the car is under extreme load uh, and you're asking it to do a transition from one side to the other under really really unfortunate circumstances and it's not smooth it's pretty bumpy um, so what we're trying to do with any chicane, much like the bus stop or any bus stop, is we're trying to draw as straight a line as possible. Um, so we're, this is of no exception. We're drawing a straight line as possible through um, this corner. On the entry, we've got some really good brake markers and, and, and just frankly excellent markers. Um, we've got the 3-2 and then there is a yellow signpost or a yellow, like, um, yellow flag post. Uh, it's very easy to see once you get up to it. Um, that's my brake marker if I'm threshold braking. If you're lifting and coasting, you can lift at the three board uh, and coast into the brake zone, which means you would brake past that yellow pole. Um, so, but we're talking about threshold braking here, so we're going to go all the way and we're going to look for that board. It's right here. It's difficult to see in chase. You can see it after the two board up in this area. Um, it's much easier to see from the cockpit. We're going to brake pretty hard at the board, almost th pretty much threshold braking. And then as soon as we start hitting that threshold braking zone, we're going to start turning the wheel and start letting off the brake and trail braking into the corner. So I'm starting, I'm already at 40% brake. I've already started my turn in point. And then what I'm doing from a visual standpoint is I want my left side tires to ride along this curb. It always feels like you're kind of, you're, you're doing it on an arc, but when you look at it from outside the car, it almost looks like a straight line. And, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to straight line this over these two curbs. So boom, boom, and then a little bit start to the car to turn right over the second set of curbs and then go about mid track halfway through and then straight line on the way out. So on the way in, 
got to move the car and we got to keep turning the car to try to get us as, as much an advantage for the right hander as possible because all that really matters for the bus stop is after this second curving so while it's not a complete straight line we're getting the car over just enough to the left so we can angle it to the right and carry more speed we're going to kill this curving and go over it this was not a 1x um, but any further right and it would be a 1x um, so just be aware of that if you're getting 1x's right here you know you may say i'm not touching the grass where am i getting that from you're touching the grass like this didn't feel like i was touching the grass and you can actually see how much of my tire was over it um, but again this is not a 1x we're trying to straight line it as much as possible notice where i start to transition to throttle at this point i'm off all pedals i'm no longer on any brake and i'm picking up throttle on my way over the curving i'm kind of just hovering with that throttle pedal i'm letting the car take a nice set before i just mash it and get a good accelerating coming out I'm waiting and then once I realize that I've got a good sight picture coming through the bus stop and I can see ahead, I can see my line through here, boom, 100% full throttle all the way through. Kill both curbs in a nice straight line, nice and controlled. Where people get in trouble with the bus stop is they take it too fast in and they overcook this entry and end up somewhere out here. They can't get the car turned and they have to overslow the car in order to get it properly set up for a good run coming out. If anything, if you're having problems with the bus stop, take it slow in. It's much better to be slower on this first section than to be slow coming out of the corner. So take it nice and slow, work your speed up, get a good line on the entry, get to the point where you're right here and you know that you can get a good early throttle, full throttle to accelerate out of the corner. That will do you much better than going in way too fast and having to sort it all out. On cold tires with this setup, I was finding myself having a little bit of oversteer issues right around here. Basically, when it jumps this curb, you can see the sparks pop. When it jumps this curb, the rear of the car was getting squirrely. Um, the best way to combat that is to make this second bit as straight as possible. So if you need to run a little bit wider on here, to get it a little wider out here to get a straighter line so be it the goal is to make you comfortable to get on throttle as soon as possible um, where people tend to run in problems is they're not anticipating this jump here or this little bump and if they get a little bit of a wiggle they panic lift out of the throttle and just upset the balance of the car and that's where a lot of big hits come the car gets unsettled right here they lift they lose the rear end and the car oversteers and look what's looking at you is a concrete wall and that'll ruin, that'll end your race right there. Um, the big thing, if you have a problem or you feel like it's not going well or things are gonna get out of hand really quickly, just open your hands and go straight. You'll take a slowdown for going over the grass, but you won't be on a concrete wall. Look where you can make the error where you can't. Um, and then the final thing I'll say about on the way out, be careful of taking too much grass here because it is a very, very fine line in terms of getting a 1x and then getting a slowdown is not much further than that. So be careful with that. If we get a good run coming out of that corner, we're home free all the way down to the front straight uh, to finish our lap. Uh, the fastest way around the oval in general is down uh, against the, the yellow line because you're traveling the uh, shortest distance possible. So hug that yellow line all the way down to start finish this particular lap was a 44-1 in pretty cold conditions i think uh 65 degree track temp um so about as good a conditions as you possibly can uh it's pretty i think that's a pretty good time but i'm not totally sure um people always surprise me with the lap times here so one of that i also wanted to show is the uh, alternative lines through a couple of these corners so the second lap has different lines. So whereas before I took turn one from mid track, turn one here, I'm exaggerating way deep all the way to track right, and I'm going to take a really wide angle coming in. So you can see, whereas before I was down here on the inside, now I'm way on the outside and trying to take a nice wide line. You can go way out here. This is not a one X. Um, this is all racing surface as far as I racing is concerned. So I'm trying to take a wide line to open the corner as much as possible. The difference being I am traveling a much further distance, even if I have more speed 
at mid corner because of the wide line, um, I've traveled a further distance. I think it was like a, a one one hundredth of a difference in terms of lap time or in terms of corner time for this sector with that wide line. So not a big deal. Coming up to this, uh, the horseshoe, I try to do the same thing. Again, white line treated as a single apex. So nice wide line coming in, bringing the car down, bringing the car down, and then doing the single apex, um, which is really late and accelerating out. The big difference is, is on the entry, having that really wide line, um, it's just difficult to get the car turned and slowed down because you're off camber through here. If you once you finally do it, you can get on throttle sooner and you can get a good squirt coming out of the corner, but the entry is compromised pretty significantly and you leave yourself exposed to attack. Coming through into the second horseshoe, much of the same story here. Nice wide line coming in, so take it in super deep and do a single apex, which is super late right there. And then finally in the left hander leading on to NASCAR, same thing, super wide line. Getting on throttle, well, the, the first part of the corner is the same, the first apex, but the second part is a super wide line, get on throttle really early and open my hands way and exaggerate it. Notice how far off I am from where I was apexing the, the other time. While this is faster coming out and you get a little bit more speed coming up on the oval, you're traveling a further distance and ultimately results in not much difference in terms of lap time through the sector. I'm going to show what this looks like by, with VRS um, just to demonstrate it. So turn one, uh, the white line or the blue line is my usual line. The dotted line, the dotted red line is the alternative wide line. You can see the difference in this area, um, how divergent the two lines are from each other. Um, and you can see the speed differential right here. So pretty much right here, which is where the cars are, yeah, I'd say classify it's finally slowing speed. So at the brake zone, um, the speed difference between the two uh, is I'm a little bit faster on the shallower line coming in because I kind of have a straighter line for braking. So I can break a little bit later. But when we get down to the slowest point of the corner, I'm having to go slower with the shallow line to make the corner just because of physics. I'm able to maintain a little bit more speed and have a higher min speed with the wider line. And then coming out of the corner, again, there's a speed differential between the two lines where the wide red line is faster coming out of the corner by about 3.4 miles an hour. But as we come out of the corner, that just starts to disappear to the point where it's negligible leading into the... Um, the chicanes following. You can see that in terms of the, the lap time. Um, this is the lap time difference, this line. So as it goes up, the shallow line is winning at the lap time, is going faster. But then as you're coming out, the advantage pays off for the wide line. The result is 0 .05, 0 0.015 seconds. So one one hundredth of a second difference through this turn between the two lines not much difference it's the same thing if we look at turn seven uh which is the or not turn seven uh turn five the second horseshoe again wide line with a redded dot line um in a shallow line a double apex with the blue line 0 0.018 difference between the two and if you look at the time where the time is being made and lost between the two you see on the entry that's where the shallow line is making its time and then on the way coming out, that's where the red line is making its time. So again, two different theories, two different schools of thought. They're achieving the same goal, very similar times. In fact, driving the entire way like that uh, with the wide line, which is not normally what I do, so I'm not the best at it. I was just over a tenth slower. That's it. Um, I, with some practice, those times would be right on top of each other, I think. All right, so I'm going to do what I typically do. I'm going to go back to cockpit view on my first lap and play it without me stopping it so you can see what it looks like while talking over it. So coming in, I'm going to break about halfway down before the cones. Nice tight line, get off the brakes, apex really late behind the wall and get a good acceleration out. I'm going to transition over the blend line, break at the end of the blend line, 
early turn in, almost a double apex. There's one and then apex really late. Second gear coming out, opening my hands, uh, using all of the track to let the car accelerate. Flat through the kink, nice wide line, quiet hands. Brake at the service road. Turn in early under braking, double apex, apex one, and then start accelerating in second gear, apex two, track out. I'm gonna brake at the start of the service road on the right. I'm gonna turn in after the curbing. Left side tires on the grass, keep it tight, start adding throttle, adding throttle, opening my hands, and apex the second apex at that white point. A little bit of a breather all the way down the back straight leading into the bus stop. I'm going to brake after the two board where the, where the yellow post is uh, and a firm brake pedal. As I turn in, start bleeding off the brakes, try to create a, a straight line between the first two curbings. So brake, turn in, down to fourth gear, straight line through there, back on full throttle when I know I've got a good line coming through the exit. I keep the car all the way down to the left hugging that yellow line because it's the shortest distance um, around the banking. Hopefully I got a good run on there. I'm following somebody so I can get a good draft, get a couple mile an hour going down the street all the way to the start finish line, which starts another lap of Daytona. All right, some standard questions of Daytona that typically be asked. Um, the first one being this yellow line, can you cross it down on the bottom of the track? Uh, the rule is that you can't be down below the yellow line between the cones. So what I mean by the cones is here's the cones entering into NASCAR 4. You can't be down on the apron down here to try to gain an advantage. Of course, if your car is stricken or damaged and you're trying to get out of the way, go down there. It's probably the safest place to be because you're offline and you're off the track, but you're not racing anybody at that point. And you'll probably get a pretty big slowdown if you're anywhere down here and you cross these cones over here. Once you cross these cones, you're now technically in pit entry territory. And this is where you tend to see a lot of people start trying to make moves, um, especially late in the race by trying to dive down here. It's not a 1X, it's pit entry, um, but you can technically go down here and maybe try to pass somebody. The rule of thumb is, is that if you go below the yellow line um, in NASCAR and in sports car racing in general, you are not granted or you're not um, while you can do it, you're not allowed right away to come back onto the racing surface. So in other words, if there's a car behind me that has a run and they try to make a move, let's say right here, because they want to take advantage of this little bit of shorter distance through here, and they come down underneath the yellow line to try to make a pass, I have no obligation as the car that never left the track to leave them room at the end of this. So as we come down here, if I wanted to, I could keep hugging this yellow line and they would have to stay down here off the track um, and not touch me. If they come up and make contact with me on their way back entering the track, it's 100% on the car that's down below the line. In general, and just from a sportsmanship point of view, don't go below the yellow line. Um, it's kind of bad form um, to do that. While there's nothing against the rules per se, uh, and, and I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn uh, for the league, but there's nothing against the rules. It's just kind of bad form. Race people like you would want to be raced. In general, you probably wouldn't want to get past below the yellow line, frankly. Um, so don't do it to your opponents. Play nice, be safe, stay on the racing surface, make moves up here. There's plenty of room to be able to do it. There's no reason to have to go down here. Um, the other thing uh, that is a common question is with the bus stop, if you get a slowdown going through the bus stop, how is best to serve it? Uh, frankly, the easiest way to serve a slowdown through the bus stop through here. So let's say you get your slowdown right here because you're too far left. Track out to the right side of the track, go all the way up to the wall and ride the cur or ride the corner all the way up against the wall. It's a longer distance, meaning you're going to be slower. Um, but it's going to, because of that longer distance, it's going to make the slowdown tick off or tick down. You may have to still do a little bit of a lift, but you've got two things going for you. You're offline, so nobody's going to be uh, running into the back of you when you get off the throttle to serve your slowdown. Um, and two, um, you don't have to slow down like speed wise as much because you're traveling a further distance. So that will also pull down your slowdown without losing you your momentum, which is important. 
outside of that um pretty much every corner is a p potential passing corner other than the bus stop i would say don't pass in the bus stop don't go too wide into the bus stop um, the only way to make a move into the bus stop is if you're like completely alongside on the inside of your opponent you've made a move and you're like here under the break zone they know you're there and they can't turn into you because they see you don't try to send it under breaking into the bus stop because it's a very high speed corner it's almost impossible to go too wide through there and even if you do go too wide through there you both cars are going to be so slow relative to the field you're going to lose seconds uh to the field so be smart with that everywhere else i mean this track is built for passing um turn one is an excellent opportunity to pass with the multiple lines the first horseshoe is another great place where you can take a, a shallow line um, and try to make a move on somebody the second horseshoe another great place to pass uh probably the corner that where you still can pass is not a good idea to pass is coming back onto the nascar uh just because you want to get a good run through that corner because it's so important to your lap time if you go too wide through there you're sacrificing uh the best line that you could possibly have and you may you're going to lose probably a second to the field by making a pass there so use your judgment on that other than that, I apologize for not being able to do this live with you guys this week. I have an engagement this evening that I have to attend, so I wanted to get this thing filmed out and posted uh, before the typical time so you guys can view and start practicing uh, for Daytona, which starts next week. Um, again, my name is Chris Pies for PCA Sim Racing. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to me or any of the other instructors on Discord, and we'll be happy to answer them and help guide you in the right direction. Until next time. Good luck, and I'll see you out on the track. Thank you.